Even before Hollywood's big hit dinosaur films, museum dinosaur displays fascinated children and adults alike. However, few likely consider who makes these amazing creations. Canadian craftsman Peter May's workshop near Niagara Falls, Ontario seems a bit like a dinosaur building site. It's a work in progress on a stegosaurus, and we haven't put the, the plates on yet or reconstructed the backbone. This one's pretty straightforward. It's, uh, it's your old standard dinosaur. Straightforward only if you're Peter May, but that's because he's one of the world's best at this craft. Well, this came right out of the blue. It's just grown. I don't think any, anybody could sit down in their late teens and say, I'm going to be a dinosaur builder. May began his career working at Toronto's Royal Ontario Museum in the early 1980s. However, many of the museums around the globe could no longer afford to keep experts like May on staff, so the dinosaur builder found a job more suited for him. Instead of limiting himself to one museum, he started hiring himself out as a freelancer. So he found that if he freelanced, that the museums of the world could come to him when they needed him. And that's what's happening. He has jobs in Europe and in Japan and all around the world. Most people believe he's the best. It's rare for May's company, Research Casting International, to mount actual dinosaur bones. Most of their work is in making casts of real bones to create artificial ones. The process begins with painting the actual bone with rubber to recreate its feel and shape. Next, they wrap the car shape in a hard covering for support and pour in a fiberglass compound. The finished product is an artificial bone that is identical in shape to the real one. These artificial bones are cheaper and lighter than actual fossils, and holes can be drilled into them so the skeletons can be assembled on a central supporting structure, thus making them more stable. Most of the skeletons, however, are incomplete. The builders must shape the missing pieces to recreate parts of animals that have been extinct for millions of years. There aren't many courses about mounting dinosaurs. May's team must learn on the job. Some started their careers in another trade and transferred their skills. Garth Dolman was a blacksmith. It's a, a good blend of science and art. My skills are actually... Uh, uh, I guess they're coming back in a lot of ways. Some people are wanting decorative ironwork, but the actual trade of blacksmithing is a, a bit of a dinosaur too. <laughs> Putting a skeleton together is a natural version of a construction project. The unfortunate aspect of this puzzle is that if just one piece of the skeleton is placed incorrectly, the entire structure could be thrown out of shape. And if you don't start with the leg in the right way, then the hip will be wrong and then the back one will be wrong. So you really have to know what you're doing from the beginning on so that everything, everything works properly. I mean, it's like a puzzle. You can't put one piece, one piece in wrong and expect everything else to fit. The builders in May's workshop also help scientists solve the mysteries surrounding these ancient reptiles that roamed the Earth. They are in the fore of the controversies of how these animals lived and acted because how you put them together, what kind of posture you put them in, um, really is the way they are interpreted. A paleontologist might say, well, we believe it's done this way, and the guy who's mounting it could say, well, I don't think the bones go together that way. Look, you know? And so, so there is this conversation back and forth that's quite valuable. And there's a very big difference between an average mount and a fantastic mount. A really beautifully posed mount is a work of art. Dinosaur builders are the public face of paleontology. They provide the big show that follows the hard work in the field, and the responsibility really means something to them. It's like anything, it becomes a, a labor of love. These guys are king of the hill back then. You know, and as you work on it, your mind drifts. And then when it's mounted and, and it's on display in a museum, that the one skeleton becomes part of a whole, which is the history of our world.